So this is video two in the Kubernetes of the Cloud series, and we're going to look at Azure's offering, offering, which is Azure Kubernetes Service. So we've already done two other videos with the same code that we're using, the Azure VM scale sets and the simple Azure containers. And that's where we have a very simple uh, Python-based microservice implemented in Flask. And we, in the first one, we implemented it on VMs, which is a little heavy because these are, these are micro, they're small, so they don't really need a complete VM. But that's how we did it. We used the VMs and deployed the Python microservice. Then we containerized that same code and deployed it with as a uh, Azure container app, which is the simplest way to run containers. So what we're going to do is convert all that to Kubernetes using Azure Kubernetes Service. So what are we going to build in this project? We're going to build a document database uh, for the microservice. We're going to use Azure Cosmos DB. So then we're going to uh, take the uh, Flask microservices and we're going to build them in a Docker container. And then we also have three other containers we're going to build. And they are very simple JavaScript games that I, I found out. There's a GitHub project that I link here. So you can go see the code and who did that. And so once we do that, we're going to push all those uh, containers, the four containers, into an Azure Container Registry. So once we do that, we're going to deploy uh, the Azure AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. This takes the longest of all the build. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. Then once that's done, we are going to hook up kubectl to uh, the the cluster that we've created and we have two files we're going to run game jaml flask app jaml and that's going to deploy all of our containers within our cluster and then with we have nginx as an ingress unified index controller so we have one load balancer and then there's different paths on the load balancer now the first diagram is the logical kubernetes view and this looks remarkably similar across all the cloud cloud platform providers You've got first one, the control plane with Azure Kubernetes services. This is the fully managed parts you don't see. I, I took some choice services. There's a lot more services in there. But, it, you know, the, the big point is that you hook up QCTL into the API server, and then it can interact with uh, you. Um, you can interact with the cluster with QCTL. That's where you do your applies to your YAML and just configure your, your uh, deployments and services. And so... The next part is the node pools. So we have a default node pool, and that's where we run the Flask app API. Then there's a bunch of connected services that we connect. We first connect to virtual networking. We connect to Azure Container Registry. We use the Cosmos database in the Flask app thing. That's we have to create a Kubernetes account and grant the role appropriately with uh, into our back. And then that will allow these two pods to interact with the database. And then the last part is the Azure Load Balancer and the Nginx services. So that's the Kubernetes view of the world. So now let's look at um, what it actually provisions. Now, one of the things we're going to go through is Azure's really a lot of slick with this. Is in the other providers, it provisions all this infrastructure and it's all over the place. So you have to go look and see, you know, auto scaling's here, load balancer's here. With Azure, it creates a, you know, in a project, you're going to have your resource group. What it does for Kubernetes is it creates a peer resource group where it implements all your infrastructure. So your control plane and your view of the logical services in your resource group, but then it puts the infrastructure in the, in its own resource group because it's very easy to isolate. Okay. This is part of Kubernetes. So like I said, you're going to get two scale sets for each node pool. And even though the uh, games no pool only has one, it's still going to do a VM scale scale. And then we have a load balancer and IP address associated public IP address. So that's that's the infrastructure that it provisions on your behalf. And of course, we got the Cosmos DB table and the Azure Container Registry. Here's what you, you need. You need an Azure account. You need the AZ CLI. You need Terraform, Postman for testing, Docker, the Microsoft app provider must be enabled. We actually enable that for you and check ENV. And then you must have this user administrator access role because we use a managed identity on the Kubernetes cluster to uh, grant roles like the Cosmos DB. So if this is your first time doing a video with, with Azure, you might want to go to our Azure and Terraform easy setup. 
environment. I'm using an Ubuntu server within Azure to for my builds. You want to paste. And do is we want to run check env. So we've got check env. And it goes, hey, you don't have user access administrator role. So let's walk through adding that since that's different than the default setup. Uh, I'm going to go to subscriptions. I'm going to click on the subscription I'm building under. And I'm going to say uh, add role assignment. And let's go to privilege admin role. We'll go to user administrator. Click on that. Hit next. And I'm going to select members. I'm going to go and do my Terraform build identity. Select that. Hit next. I'm going to do the second option, the recommended option, and I'm going to review and assign. And let's do an apply sh. Okay, the build has completed. So now what we're going to do is bring up the Azure console and let's take a look as to what actually got built. So let's go to uh, your web browser. I'll uh, log on to your console. This is the default page. And I'm going to click on resource group. And the first resource group is going to be the one that we actually created explicitly, the AKS Flask app resource group. And you can see all the infrastructure that we've deployed in this solution, the container registry. We can click on the container registry. We can look at the repositories. You've got the Flask app and games. And it disables it there. Then we've got sort of the big kahuna, the Flask uh, AKS instance. So click on that. I can go in here and it's going to show me the, uh, the namespaces. And I can go to workloads and I can say, all right, Let's look at all the pods in the games namespace, or all the deployments, or all the pods in the games namespace. So I could go in and change that to um, default to get the, the flask app. You can click on it and you can drill down into the, the YAML. Um, so this is, you know, quite a bit of UI built on top of uh, kubectl. I usually just use kubectl, so I don't use these a lot. So I, I, I'm not sure how many people in the wild use them. What's interesting is I noticed that there's a new thing in there. It's this run command, which is uh, essentially a way to run a one run command kubectl directly. So I can go in here and say uh, kubectl get pods and getting the results. So I could say kubectl uh, get pods dash d games. Even with the web interface, you just have a, you have a straight up kubectl command line, which I like. Um, so that's pretty much it for the AKS instance. What we have to do is go look at what it provisions on your behalf. So like if I do a kubectl get, um, get nodes uh, default, and that has one to four, and we're going to scale that in a bit. And then we have the game nodes, which is just one. Uh, so how is that actually implemented? And so if you go back to our resource groups and you will notice that there's this peer resource group, this MC, AKS, Flask, App, RGC. This is where uh, Azure is a little, little slicker in how it contains all of this EKS or AKS uh, infrastructure into one resource group. So we click on that and this is going to give you all the things that we've been talking about, what it provisions. So we've got the uh, default node pool. So I can click on that and I have my instances running. And then we also have tags. So if I click on the tags here, you'll see all those bookkeeping tags we keep talking about. And so there's two node pools. Um, there's the default node pool, which is a virtual machine scale set. There's a game nodes pool, which is only one, but it's still a virtual machine scale set. So I click on that and you're gonna have the same um, tagging to glue it all together. Then the next thing we have, we talked about the um, Kubernetes load balancer, and that has its own tags associated with it. And then a diagram, in addition to that, we have the public IP address for the load balancer. 
Okay, so to test the endpoints, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to your boot and development environment, and I'm going to run validate again. Within Postman, you're going to put in the, the health check URL from validate, and it should run and give you the same result that we're seeing in all of the other ones. So it's got the connected and then the host name, which is actually going to be the host pod name. And we're or the host, but the pod IP address is what this is going to be. So let's go look at the, the various endpoints. First off, notice it's Flaskap API. So we are using Nginx to only uh, glue this container resource to this endpoint or to this path. So now I can go and say, let's do candidates host. And I could do candidate homey. Then I could do uh, get, I should now have homey and John Smith. So this, this is the, the API. There's four endpoints. I think we tested everyone except the last one, and that's where you go candidate, homie, and it'll just show you the one user. So those are the four endpoints. Uh, so what we're going to do is take this URL. Let me copy that. And uh, let's bring up the web browser again. And I'm going to put that in there, and we should get an Nginx error because there's nothing routing. So now what we're going to do is go to the games endpoints and they're on slash games, Tetris. And then we have Frogger and I will fill that. So those are um, Nginx server where all the routing happens. Look at it from a kubectl perspective. So let's go back to our Mutu environment and I'll do clear. And I should be able to do kubectl get nodes. And I've got the two nodes, the default node pool and the games node pool. And I'm going to do kubectl get um, pods. And that's going to show me the uh, the two flash gap because it's a default. And if I do the, dash, the namespace games, you're going to see the other ones. And then I could go in and say kubectl describe um, this guy right here. Pod. Deployment, uh, you know, description. All right. So this is probably pretty much done with going over the project. This is a complete example that you can use to make your own. So these services are a little bit expensive. So as usual, you want to be good steward of your cloud account. So you want to go and destroy.